Oh, man, this is heavy. Can you see it? Yep, that's the stone. Wow. This is Pastor David Stephenson from Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Rochester, Minnesota. And I've got a children's message for you today. And it's about stones. Whew, gotta catch my breath. You know, I grew up on a farm and we used to pick rocks. And the rock, the stone that I just showed you, well, it was a special one that was given when God provided some land for our church here in Rochester and then some dear friends, Brad and Peg. They made this special stone for us so that we could dedicate that land to the glory of God. So today, in light of our Bible readings for this weekend, I want to share with you some words about stones, namely rocks. Sometimes people like Rocky Road uh, ice cream. Some people like to collect rocks. I did that when I was young. I would collect agates and other pretty stones and then get them all polished up so they'd be nice and pretty. I traveled to Israel in 1991 and then again in 2011. And when I traveled there, one of the things that I noticed right away is stones, rocks, all over the place. You see, I grew up thinking that if you're a carpenter, you work with wood. And that's true. But carpenters in Jesus' day, 2,000 years ago, they worked with stones also, beautiful stones that they could make all kinds of wonderful things with. Well, let's talk about rocks, because the Bible in the Old Testament and, the Old, and in the New Testament talks about rocks all the time. In fact, we hear about rocky soil where it's hard to raise a crop. And we also hear about how Jesus is the rock of our salvation. When I grew up on the farm, we would pick rock. We would sometimes hang onto those rocks. And you know what my mom would do? She would take those ordinary kind of dull, big, different size rocks, and she would make a flower bed. It would be like bricks around it, you know, circular or in a rectangle. And then we would paint them, and she'd have beautiful different colored flowers inside. It's amazing how you could use rocks to build with, but also to make something beautiful with. In Psalm 118, it says that there was a rock that God gave the world, Jesus, but that people rejected Jesus. And God said, well, then I'm going to have to make that the most important rock of all. So Jesus went to the cross, and on the third day, he rose again for the forgiveness of our sins. So that means God has taken the rejected stone and made it the most important rock stone of all time. Yes, there's a lot of things that we can talk about when it comes to rocks. You know the story of the Old Testament about David and Goliath, right? Remember what happens? Nobody wants to fight Goliath. He's huge, 10 feet tall. Nobody can fight him because he's big and he's strong. But David, he's a youngest boy in the family of Jesse. He says, I'll take him on. And guess what he uses? I've been there, Israel, the Wadi Elah. I brought five smooth stones home with me. They're in my basement right now. I could show them to you. And he had a sling. And he was so good with that sling that he could... Whoosh, and he was able to defeat Goliath and win the battle. Yes, stones. The most important stone of all is Jesus. Well, some people, they like to have stones, you know, in their rings. My college class ring, or more importantly, my wedding ring. Doesn't matter to me how big that stone is. Because no stone, no diamond, no pearl, no ruby can compare to the rock of our salvation. And that's Jesus. Jesus is our rock, our protector. Jesus is the one who saves us from all of our sin. So, what is it that I want you to think about today? I want you to think about how the Bible doesn't want us to forget ever that Jesus is the rock of our salvation. I want you to talk about that with your mom, with your dad, 
Grandpa and Grandpa, maybe you want to go out and collect some rocks. Maybe you want to make something with rocks. My, my grandsons, they do that. They got smooth stones and then they paint words or pictures on them. Maybe you want to do something artistic with the rocks around your house. Be creative. Be imaginative. And when you see the stone, when you see the rock, I want you to remember. Remember that God has a forever love for you. Here's a song that I used to teach kids. You might even recognize it. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be safe from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and may the God of our salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and may the God of our salvation be exalted. Boom, boom, chicka, chicka, boom, boom, chicka, chicka. I will call upon the rock. Why? Because Jesus is worthy to be praised. Stones rocks. Don't forget them. Some people might say, you got stones or rocks in your head? No, I got Jesus in my head and in my heart, and he lives in you, and he lives in me. When he comes into Jerusalem at the end of Lent, remember, we're in the season of Lent, but we don't forget Easter. When he comes into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and we'll have some palm fronds for those who worship with us, guess what is going to happen? The people are going to say, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the religious leaders, some of them are going to say, you tell those kids to be quiet. And Jesus will say, even if those adults and those kids, those grandmas and grandpas, those moms and dads, even if they were quiet, even if they shh, didn't say a word, it wouldn't matter. You know why? Because the stones, the rocks would cry out, Hosanna. Save us, Jesus. And what does he do? Good Friday. He saves us from our sin. And then on the third day, just like he promised, on the third day, well, he comes back because the rock, the stone, is rolled away. In fact, in one of the Gospels, it says that there was an angel sitting on a stone, using it like a pulpit to be able to proclaim the good news. You see, in our Bible readings for this weekend, the question is asked, why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there suffering? Well, we know the answer. It's because of sin. We're not in a right relationship with God. And we can say, well, tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. Why did that person die so young? I don't know. But I do know that on the cross, God cries with us and that God says, I want things to be different. And on the third day, they are. Because not even tears, not even death, not even suffering and sorrow ever gets the last word. The rock, Jesus, he gets the last word. So when I was in Israel, I noticed something. They had cemeteries there. And sometimes we go to a cemetery and we put flowers there as a way of showing respect, as a way of saying, I miss somebody but I'll get to see them again. Flowers, new life, beauty. Well, Jesus, he rose from the dead in a garden tomb. There had to have been flowers there. And in Israel, they put stones. They put little stones on all of those great places as a way of saying, I think Jesus is the rock of our salvation. So don't worry about the question, why, why, why? Instead, believe, believe, believe. Believe that Jesus loves you with a forever love. Will you pray with me? Let's do a repeat prayer. Dear Jesus, you are my rock. You are the rock of my salvation. You are my priceless diamond. You are my pearl of great price. Help me to bear fruit. 
Help me to sing your praises. Amen. Well, that's what I have for you today. You take care and God be with you until we meet again. And remember, Jesus is the rock of your salvation.